just thank the Lord All you need is faith All you need is faith To keep those diesels humming We don't need no ticket We just thank the Lord That song blessed me because The price has already been paid Christ paid the, pa the price with his blood He shed blood So with the grace of God It's not based on our works As Pastor Lannis told us It's God's grace So we can thank the Lord Thank the Lord the name of this last song is just Thank You, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want been so good excited than that. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you all. Can you just walk around and just hug somebody? Just welcome them to, to good night. Hallelujah. time it is to be in the house of God and also what a wonderful time it is to fellowship with the brethren we're so excited that you've made it here today we also want to welcome those that are watching via the internet welcome to good night what's up pastor Lan if you're watching God bless you 
So we, like we usually do, we like to kick off with some testimonies. The Bible says that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. So we're going to take some testimonies before we go into the word of God. So if there's anyone here with, with a testimony, you, you know, you know how we roll. Feel free to just come forth and share your testimony uh, for God's glory and for our edification. Praise God. I shared last, uh, last week that I had a great interview. And the testimonies that I got the confirmation this week. I uh, got a confirmation letter. So uh, it'll be a position where it's, it's not just a job, but it's, it's work that's suited to the gifts that God has given me. So I will be a, uh, a lead uh, residential counselor working with inner city youth, um, helping them to, to overcome challenges of their families, but I help them to graduate from college. These are talented youth who are, have already overcome, so we're keeping them focused. And uh, they want me to not only help them with their, their studies, but they want to implement what they call healthy lifestyles. Okay. Fitness and at, at healthy eating. So they want me to include some of the other things that I do. So I just praise God and just an uh, uh, opportunity to serve. Wow. Amen. <laughs> praise God. That's wonderful. I mean, there's nothing like using your gifts and talents, you know, to be a blessing to others. Praise God for that. Congratulations. So uh, testimonies. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I just want to really thank God because um, on Monday night, my mom and my two sisters flew in safely from Nigeria. And I want to thank God because they're here right now and they're sleeping at home, which is why they're not here this evening. But I also want to particularly thank God because my mom said when the flight was actually going to land, they actually had to make an emergency landing where you get into the, wow. the duct position because one of the engines failed just before landing. And um, when they actually landed, like all the fire trucks, the police... Like, the whole runway was just prepared. prepared. Yeah, and they had to, we've never had that experience. And she said it happened at O'Hare, and they said they didn't know what happened just 30 minutes before landing. And, and they were all sitting separately. So it was even, like, a greater, it was a thing that they could have panicked over, and, you know, it could have ended very differently. But I just really thank God that he brought them safely. Um, um, by God's grace, by this time next week, my dad will be here as well. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for protection, divine protection. Yeah, Jesse has a testimony. <laughs> my test. It's on. My testimony is that the um when the big door fell on my head, and I got went to the hospital and stapled, they stapled my head. I feel well feel well. Praise God. He had a little incident and he's healed now. Right? Praise God. Let me just add to it. <laughs> that was an abbreviated version. Yes. Very but good. I just want to thank God for his protection because yes. when the incident happened, it was actually three of them um, there. And, um, you know, I thank God that it was not worse than that, yeah, you know. And even with Jesse, you, could, you can even hardly tell that he had a slash on his head. Yeah. You know, when the incident happened, you know, the, um, the door hinge slashed his head like the diameter of a quarter. Um, but thank God the wound wasn't that, you know, he, he didn't get into his vital organs. Mm -hmm. We want to thank God for that. And even after it was, was, you know, stapled together, the next day one of the staples mm -hmm. fell out and the skin had already come together. Like, if you look at his head, you can barely tell that anything happened. So I just want to thank God for speedy recovery and Amen. supernatural healing. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to thank God for bringing us safely to Chicago, all, from, all the way from Nigeria, to meet you lovely, lovely people. We thank God for your lives. And we thank God for all that God is using you to do in City Light and in Chicago. May the Lord God Almighty continue to bless you all. Amen. Keep your families. We came here for a purpose. And the Lord God has done it for us. Amen. And we thank God that all that the Lord God has done for us will be permanent in the name of Jesus. We pray for Pastor Lan. 
pray that the Lord God will continue to establish the City Light International Ministry and enlarge it. And God bless it. And may God use you to make positive spiritual impact in your community. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you all. God bless you all. Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Any more takers? Any more testimonies? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hello. It's not really a testimony. It's more of a, a time to give thanks. Um, I recently moved here from Grand Rapids, and I'm just so grateful that I got accepted by City Light. I've been to a lot of churches, and I was always just like another church member or another number, and I just, I'm so grateful for Miss Miriam and Peace and all the other wonderful men and women who has accepted me. So um, it's just so wonderful to have a church that lives by not only doctrine, but really definitely has a power of fellowship and accepting people of all different backgrounds. So thank you for being students of God and just applying the will of God over your lives and reaching out to other people. So thank you. Wow. Praise God. Okay. Thank you. Thank God. Praise God. Thank God for that. That's a good testimony. <clears throat> um, so any more testimonies? I sense there's one more testimony here. All right. Ooh -hoo. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Giving praise, Hello. giving thanks and praise to God, and to my pastor who's not here, and to the associated ministers. My testimony started ever since uh, thanks uh, Valentine's Day, when we first came to this church, me and my wife and I, and we've been blessed ever since. Uh, we didn't have much, and we're still struggling, but the Lord made the way anyway. Uh, you all open your arms up with love, understanding. You didn't have, you're not above, you're right there with the people. But the Lord has blessed us to have a brilliant, brilliant leader here at Pastor Land. He breaks the word down and he makes sure you get it. And if you don't get it, you ask him again, he'll give it to you. But thank the Lord for everybody in this church and thank the Lord for the love that you have. Me and my wife love you and We've been blessed. We continue to be blessed. We're going to bless the church too. Pastor Debo, love you. So therefore, you should love each other. Continue to love each other. You know I love you. And do the best you can. We're going to do this thing with, the, with this neighborhood. We're going to get this neighborhood together. Amen. We're going to do it together. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. So come on, talk about your picnic. Yeah, people, talk, talk about that. Hello, okay. This Saturday, this Saturday at, here uh, at uh, City Light Church, my church, my church, yeah. too, <laughs> that we are sponsoring the PEB ministry, which is my wife and I, are sponsoring a, a contest, a barbecue contest. And those who want to come out in the city of Chicago, this Saturday at 1 o'clock here at my church, City Light, church. We're going to have a barbecue outside starting at 1 o'clock. And we invite you to come on out and, and uh, have a party, give a part because we're going to be teaching the Bible too. We want you to come and get some word, get some nourishment. We're going to have our brother Kevin, brother uh, David. He's going to come with the nutrition seminar. We're going to do this thing. And then in September the 22nd at 4 o'clock here at my church, we're having the PEB is sponsoring a concert, and we want you all to come out and have a good time in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's when I feel a love fest in the air, you know, and we thank God for that. Can we just, um, can we just thank God, you know, let's spend two minutes. Let's give God some praise. You know, let's thank God. Thank God for Pastor Lan. Let's go ahead and thank him. Open your mouth and thank him. Just say thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be in a place where the word of God is taught. Let's thank God for, you know, this church. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Let's thank God for the leadership, for Pastor Lan, uh, Pastor Debo, 
the entire leadership of City Light, and everyone. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord, because the purpose for which you established this assembly will be accomplished in this neighborhood. In the name of Jesus, we yield ourselves to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And so, Lord, we thank you for this time as we go into study, as we study your word this evening, as we dig deep into the book of Romans. Holy Spirit, we ask you to come and just expound the scriptures. We're not praying for head knowledge, Lord, but we are praying for revelation knowledge, that as we delve into your word tonight, that the liberating power of the word will be released, and that anyone that came in here with any kind of issue, with any kind of situation, that the word of God will address it, and Lord, the word of God will solve it, the word of God will, will handle it in the name of Jesus. You said your word is, is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. You said your word is sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow. It says a descender of the thoughts and the intents of men. And so, Lord, we yield our members to your word tonight. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will saturate this atmosphere. Fill this place with your presence, Holy Spirit. Let no man glory in your presence tonight. Lord, you take all the glory and all the honor. Lord, even as we discuss the scriptures tonight, we pray that the Holy Spirit will be the one speaking through us. That the Holy Spirit will inspire us tonight. That we will leave this place not with the same, with a, with a greater intensity, greater favor, Lord. Greater zeal for your word. Greater zeal for your truth in the name of Jesus. You said your spirit will guide us into all truth. And so tonight as we study the word of God, that your spirit will guide us into the truth. Your spirit will guide us into the way that we ought to go. Lord, we pray for those that will be watching this via the internet, those that are listening, we pray that you will visit them wherever they may be and touch them afresh. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, we have been studying for the past... How many weeks now? Who can tell me how many weeks? We've been studying like four weeks. We've been studying the book of Romans. All right? So I want someone to just quickly come and summarize. We've, 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 so far, between Pastor Lan and myself, we've, we've, been, we've talked about, we've discussed Romans chapter 1 through Romans chapter 6. And Pastor Lan went through Romans 1 through 6. And then I came over and just kind of reiterated some things that he spoke about within those chapters. I'll be doing the same again today. Not moving beyond Romans chapter 6, but reiterating some truths. But I wanted to find out from us if we're picking up on, some th on things. I know we're picking some things, but I just want to give maybe two minutes, three minutes for someone to come up. And just kind of share what they have picked up. Some truths that have stood out in this course of uh, four weeks that they would like to share. I will go over, you know, do a, a very quick review. But I just wanted to give opportunity for someone to come up and share. So is anyone here that's willing to just very briefly share what you've got? Maybe one or two things that you've, you've, you've picked up from the lesson on the book of Romans. Anyone? Anybody? Any takers? I should be jumping up and, you know, normally I would start off by doing the review, but I don't want to start that way. I want to see. I know you've got something, so there's no need to be shy. We're all family here. So anybody? Is anybody? Any takers? Yeah, come on. You break the ice. <laughs> Only to break the ice. Only to break the ice. Well, one of, the, um, one of the things that I have picked up from Romans, the book of Romans, is, um, is Paul addressing and really actually in, um, convincing us that we ought not to be ashamed of the gospel. And the, the gospel 
is is there to regardless of where we're coming from the gospel is there for us in other words we've all fallen short of of the glory of God we're all sinners so there is no there's no need to dwell on the past or even dwell on your weakness is to pick up the mantle where you where you meet it and keep pressing forward that's what I picked up from the okay. amen Okay. Okay. The ice has been broken. So let's see. That's a good start. That's good. Hallelujah. We are checking our notebook. We are checking your notes. <laughs> ah. Supposed to be on fire. <laughs> Go ahead. Romans say, uh, let me say one, two, three talks about righteousness by faith. Righteousness that, by faith. By faith. That righteousness is not by work. It's not by works. Nobody can buy it. You mm-hmm. can't pay for it. Yep. Jesus has paid. The whole price for yes. us is just to enter it through our faith. Yes. Righteousness of God in Christ has opened the door for us yes. into the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. I try now. Yes, ma'am. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> our righteousness is 100% free. <laughs> Good. Praise God. Let's put our hands together for mommy. I mean, which you did very well. Okay, any more? Any more? Any more? <laughs> One more person. One more person. Um, also, you know, we shy. Okay, praise God. Let's put our hands together for yeah, yeah. Sister Tina. Hey. Just a real quick one. The, um, the blood of Jesus cleanses 24-7. Okay. <laughs> praise God. That's good. It cleanses 24-7. And we're going to talk about that again today. Wow. So, I want to keep encouraging you to listen to the messages. Okay? How many of you listen to the message this week? Listen to the tapes? Listen to the audience? Nobody. Again. Hey! So, so I want to encourage you again. Go to the website, www.thecitylight.org. Thank God for technology. You can get everything on your phone right now. Go to the media session. All the messages are there. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and what? Hearing by the word of God. You can't get this just by listening to it once. No. Faith does not come by having heard. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. Repetition is the law of lasting what? Impression. If you're going to Um, put something in your spirit, you have to go over it repetitively over and 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 over over again so that it sticks and it stays in your spirit. Because if you just listen to it once, again, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but if you listen to it once, it's just going to be in your head. It needs to get into your spirit. Remember the parable of the sower. He said that while the sower sowed, he said, the bird of the earth came and stole it. Why? Because it didn't even have a chance to get into the soil. Okay? Then there was another one. It got in there, but it didn't have roots, and so it withered away. Then there was another one. It went in, but then the cares of life and all the, the deceitfulness of riches came and choked it up. But then there was a good one that it went in. It actually got beyond the head level and went into the spirit and the bible says those ones reproduced what 30 fold 60 fold and 100 fold so the results that we're looking for spiritually which in turn affect everything we see physically comes when we feed our spirits and you can't just do it by just doing listening to it once thank you um uh, esco so that's the website those are the place that's where you find all the messages we have messages you know from you know going back as far as a year or so ago, just click play, listen. Get it into your spirit. Get into your heart. I know you do it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, so the book of Romans. So let me just go over it very quickly. Um, hallelujah. So we've, we've been talking about the book of Romans and... Um, just a brief background on the book of Romans for those that have not listened or those that are joining us for the first time. 
Again, Romans is not the first epistle. If you look at the Bible, the, the order, the, the chronological order of the Bible, the book of Romans comes after the book of Acts. But in reality, Paul wrote the book of Romans after he had written the book of Corinthians, even Galatians. So book of Romans is not the first epistle of Apostle Paul. In fact, it was written um, in the spring of AD 57. 57 years after the death of Christ, the book of Romans was, was written. And we said that the book of Romans was written to a group of Christians, Jewish and Gentile Christians that lived in Rome. Paul was personally acquainted with some of them. Uh, for example, the Priscilla and Aquila, these were Roman Christians that Paul worked with. They were fellow tent makers with him. And they lived in Rome and they started this church. In fact, this slew of churches that met in homes. And so Paul uh, felt impressed to write them a letter to encourage them and to share something that he was very passionate about. In fact, a theme that we would see in Paul's letters, which centered on the gospel of Jesus Christ. So he wanted us up this letter to, to showcase or to talk about some things that he needed these Jewish and Gentile Christians to know. Very important things that he needed them to know. Now, the book of Romans, like we've been discussing, the test, text for the book of Romans can be found in what book, guys? The text. Habakkuk 2 and verse 4. Habakkuk 2 and verse 4. And like we said, let's, what does Habakkuk 2 4 say? What does Habakkuk 2 4 say? What does Habakkuk 2 4 say? It says, The just shall live by faith. It says, um, the contemporary English version says, Refuse to accept anyone who is proud. Only those who live by faith are acceptable to me. Okay? Um, the American Standard Version says, Behold, his soul is puffed up. It is not upright in him, but the righteous shall live by his faith. So everybody repeat after me. Say, the, the just or the righteous shall live by his faith. Say again, the just shall live by his faith. Say, the just shall live by faith. So Paul is saying that the just shall live by faith. The word just is another word for righteous. Okay? And it's another word for righteous. And he's saying those people who are called just, the way you identify them, you, you identify them because they live by a different code. They live by a different type of standard and they live by faith. They don't live by works, what they've done with their, work, with their hands. They don't live by, based on fear, what they see around them. They live by faith. They have faith in God. And we said that Habakkuk, going back to the book of Habakkuk, was writing a complaint to God. And he was asking God a question. Lord, why is it that righteous people, in quote, are suffering? How come you're allowing righteous people to experience um, the, the attack of the Babylonians? Because Habakkuk lived in the time of Jeremiah and lived in the time where Israel was, Jerusalem was attacked. And so Habakkuk wrote this letter to God, this, this book to God, saying, God, why, oh, why are, are you allowing this atrocity to happen? Can you not see that righteous people are suffering? And God responded to Habakkuk. The just shall live by faith is not a, a, a word that um, a man coined up. This is God's response to Habakkuk. And God said, listen, your sense of entitlement to any form of protection that you're asking for, your sense of acceptance to any or, or access to anything you are believing for does not come just because you are born a Jew. It does not come just because you, of your eloquence. It does not come just because you feel you have the oracle of God. No, it comes by faith. It comes by faith. Your access to protection, your qualification for protection, your qualification for provision, your qualification for whatever it is you are believing me for, is not going to come because of who you are per se. It's going to come because of your faith in me. Hallelujah. And so Paul having come across this scripture in Habakkuk, begins to expatiate on this 
Habakkuk 2 and verse 4. We see that in, in Romans chapter 1 and verse 17, Paul quotes Habakkuk 2 4, saying, The just shall live what? By faith. In Galatians 3 11, Paul quotes the same scripture again, saying, The just shall live what? By his faith. And then in Hebrews 10 and 38, although we are not sure who wrote the book of Hebrews, that same scripture is quoted again. So that tells you, that tells me that it is of importance that we understand the concept, that we understand the message that Habakkuk 2 and 4 is trying to say. And so Paul begins to write this letter. Of course, he starts with his introduction, and he introduces himself, and he tells them that he's an apostle of God, a sent one called to what? Preach the gospel. Now, in that chapter 1, Paul begins to show us or tell us the theme of the book of Romans. And he tells us there that the, the theme of the book of Romans is this wonderful word called the gospel. Who can tell me what gospel means? It means good news. Paul says there's something I want to talk to you about that relates to Habakkuk, 4, Habakkuk um, 2 and verse 4. You see, there's something I want to talk to you about. It's some good news that I want to share. In fact, this good news tells you how to have access to this righteousness. It tells you how to be justified in the first place. It tells you how to, to be accepted by God. It tells you how to, be, to have this entitlement. There's a good news that I've been called to preach. In fact, this good news tells us how we can be saved. Hallelujah. And like I said last week, salvation will mean nothing to you if you cannot relate to it. If it is of no value to, it, to you. Okay? So Paul began to talk about the good news. He says, I am not, first and foremost, I am not ashamed of this gospel. This is in chapter 1. Because it is the power of God unto salvation. Why did Paul say, I'm not ashamed of this gospel? He said so because it is very possible for you and I, to think that this gospel is stupid just because of the way he, it's presented. Hallelujah. It is very possible for you to think it's stupid. So Paul says, I'm not ashamed. In Galatians chapter 1 and verse 11, Paul says the gospel is not based on human reasoning. You can project that. Galatians 1, 11. He says the gospel is not based, the good news is not based on human reasoning. In fact, Paul in the book of Romans goes on to tell us that the gospel to some people is a stumbling block. To the Jews, it's a stumbling block. And to the Greeks, it's foolishness. This good news you are talking about on how to get access to God, on how to be declared righteous, on how to get protection and all these things. This good news you are telling me about is foolishness to some people. And Paul says, listen, this, I don't want you to know, brothers, I, I want you to know, brothers, that the gospel I preach is not something that a man made up. If you use the NLT translation, it, it says there that it is not based on human reasoning. This gospel is not something that a human being originated. This good news of salvation is not, it's not something that is human originated. This is something that comes via revelation from God himself. Hallelujah. 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 The gospel's acceptance is based on revelation. Look at it. NLT. Do you have the NLT? The New Living Translation? Yes, please project that. Uh, Galatians 1 and, and Galatians 2. It says, I want you to know that, that the gospel I preached, the good news I preached, is not something that made good. It says, dear brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that the gospel message I preached is not based on mere human reasoning. Verse 2. Verse 2. Sorry, verse 12. <laughs> my mistake. Verse 12. It says, I received my message 